Yo, welcome back guys. Right, I've had a call out um, to come to a fuse board that has started to melt. There's a bit more to the story about it. We've travelled an hour, we're over in Coventry, so this is actually the house that we're doing a rewife uh, very soon, which you'll see in future videos. But with it, the D and long story short, there was they couldn't get any power on, they tried to top up the meter, it didn't work. So the D, uh, EDF energy or whatever came out to double check, to check the, the fuse and everything. And what happened, he opened the board, top of the board up and it all melted. So at some point when the house was sold or it was repossessed or whatever the situation was, someone came out, saw the issue, pulled the fuse, left the fuse out, and that's what it is. But there's been work being done by different trades amongst myself in a week or so, uh, but with other people, and they need some power. So the temp fuse board that we've set up in the unit got last year, we're bringing that in, we're gonna stick it in, I'm gonna show you the damage and obviously the cause and effect of why it potentially has happened. Why the new one in, obviously stick a tester across that as well because we want to make sure we've got an earth and everything's happy for everyone to use. So let's jump in and, uh, and have a look. All right, so in the house, if you haven't seen the video, I'll link it in the description and put a little card up here on the screen. This is the temp board that I made up with a couple of sockets, an earthen arrangement. We've got a tiny little board in here. That's got, it's actually, I think it's a ring or four mil, I can't remember what put, a 32 amp with an RCD. That will allow me to attach it into the meter. So I've not actually been in here yet in this bit. So let's have a look at what the issue is. Right, so the guy's been out. He's fitted me an isolator, as you can see here, which is the guy I spoke to on the phone yesterday. So I'm just trying to find a place to put this. So he's left me some, bless him, he's left me some I don't know, 16 mil. So the customer tried to top up. I'm guessing they've had a smart meter fitted recently. They put this in. He said everything seemed fine, but he wanted to double check. So he took the front of the cover off of the board. And he said that the sign's off melting. There we go. Let me get another torch out, hang on. So what you can see under there, yeah, you can even smell it when you take it off. It sort of sounds like a, like a fishy smell. So by the looks of where that's superheated up underneath there, that suggests, in my expert my expert opinion, is the buzz bar was not terminated to the correct torque setting or it become loose over time, because this does happen. You can tighten up all you want. Over the years and years and years, it heats up and it vibrates slightly. It just does come loose, come be loose. So that's why it's good with an EICR. When we go around and check it, everything's then torqued up to the correct setting you sort of reset the uh, the time limit until it sort of wiggles itself loose again. But a few issues with that, I'm not gonna power this back up, obviously, because of that, and obviously that's the, oh, it's only protecting the sockets this side. Um, that would be the, the key reason why the person before pulled the fuse and said, no, it's unsafe. C1 on an ICR, as you would say, but that would have created a lot of heat and a lot of smell. But the key dangers with this, if you look directly behind me, is the staircase. And it's a wooden staircase, as we all have in the UK. That then is the fire escape for upstairs. And by that setting on fire, it means any smoke, any heat, there's no way of getting out other than jumping through a window on the first floor, which is going to hurt whether you've got young kids or whatever. So this is why the reg was changed, where putting fuse walls now is not really recommended under staircases because you're blocking fire exits. This could have been way worse than it was. Obviously, it's been checked out with the smell. But you can think as well as well, with this door shut, the heat, the smell, everything is being contained in there. You wouldn't really know unless you went in there often to get your shoes out, your coats or whatever, that there was ever an issue other than an electrical fault where stuff starts flashing. Because after a while that will heat up, maybe something comes loose. Maybe the RCD trips because it doesn't like what's going on. But it's so dangerous. This is why we say time and time again, get your EICRs and get it checked. Get someone in there to have a look. And if this has prompted anyone watching this, to go, oh, well, fuse board, no one's been attracted for 10 years. Get an electrician out, just get a test on the house, making sure they're talking everything back up because this stuff does happen. There's a few times we've seen this now. It doesn't happen very often, but it does. And when it does, it can go very badly, very, very quickly. What I'm doing now is most of the new isolators come with a hex bit on it, or star bit, whatever you want to call it. If you've got a tool check plus, or you guys are thinking against stuff, tool check plus, can't go wrong. And it also fits lovely in my new bag, little plug there, nice. Um, and these plugs won't come out, so they're designed, they're actually within the terminal that I tightened onto to stop uh, see people playing. It's the same as the plugs that you get in the top of the meter. See what I mean? So they're in there, honestly. We want to be checking that this is turned off, but 
We presume so it's in the off position. But as we say, the electrician, you should never presume. So let's just double. I can set my probes in that. I'll just double check this is off, and uh, continue working safe. The board. I'm probably as much as I. If it was just me here, we just leave it lying. But because this other tray is going to be in and out. Look at that. That's a bit dirt. That's all right. I thought something had burnt on it. Uh, I'm just going to drill this to the wall here. Um, it was going to stop someone because if someone knocks this over, we don't want any main tails being pulled out of the Henley block here at the ISO. Potential live wire coming out because nothing here will trip if a live cable gets pulled out. And the only person that will get hurt is the person that's pulled it over. Right, so now I've got the board on. I've linked the earth across into the board because it's obviously already pre earthed. My earth won't reach across. Would you have a look at that? Boards on, screwed back. So now we can on, on, on. I'm just going to get a ZE on what we want. Testing. Oh, we've got a ZE. ZE. I'm not getting a ZE, guys. Right, we've got a ZS. I might have said ZE before I meant ZS on here, 0 0.5. So just by doing that, we confirm that there is a earthen conductor present. Our earthen arrangement is okay. We've got a TNS system here, which means that the earth is on the outer sheath of the incoming cable. So hence by that, but I've seen this quite a lot now, which is an old earth tag put across there. And even though the DNA was come out recently and upgraded the cutout, the meter and the ISO, that's what's been left instead of them doing a proper joint where they Back in the day, they would like um, solder lead onto the side of it with a terminal block, and they would do like a permanent lead that comes across into a connector block, very similar to this one, and you would come off there. But they obviously think that's fine. But let me know how often do you come across this, and what do you do about it? So if we've got a good connection, then I really can't see an issue with leaving it there, rather than getting them out when they've already been out by the looks of it twice at least recently to do this. But yeah, let me know in the comments. If you do make a temp board up, if you ever set it up, please make sure you just stick a tester across it just to make sure you've got an earth to protect yourself from plugging anything in or charging it up or kettle or whatever. Most of the tools that you will use are class two anyway. It's better being safe than sorry if other people are using it and you're not here. So yeah, a bit of an interesting one. I'm going to go now and do a video in this house because we're starting the rewind next week of how we quote um, things to look out for on a rewire, stuff that you can sort of pick out, spec up for potential use and all that sort of stuff. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you on the next one.